All right. Um, so again, thanks for having me here. I'm Diego. I'm with Microsoft here in Canada. And I'm here today to talk about jump boxes at easy, um, how we can actually use tools like Terraform and Packer to spin up and create um, secure environments that um, you know we use every day at work. Um, this whole presentation uh, will be is actually available right now on my GitHub. Uh, there are some minor changes in here. Um, so you can actually get everything that I have and I have it in a form of a workshop. So you can pace yourself and uh, try it out. Um, I will be using um, Azure for this. Um, there are some toolings that you can use to make um, you know, your whole experience a little uh, easier, uh, but hey, you're fine to use VI, at least on my standards, and that's what I use here too. So it's in there uh, if you want it. Um, so let's talk about this for a second. Why, you know, why do we care about uh, this anyway? I mean, what is a jump box and does that even matter today? So kind of borrowing this from, from um, the Wikipedia, um, I think the core aspect of this, of a jump server, some folks also call the bastion host uh, or a proxy server is a, a Traditionally, um, a machine that it would be segregated from the network, usually like in a DMZ. And um, folks would get access to that machine, so that would be your point of entry instead of a network. And then from that machine, um, you would then be able to access your database, uh, your web service and whatnot. Um, now, as we further move along um, and you know we're basically moving out of our workloads to the cloud. Um, the, the fact, the sure fact that we, we have everything exposed um, to, the, you know, to the internet kind of drives the conversation like, well, maybe we, we still need jump boxes around. You know, not, not everything will be running as past services. And that's just the reality of, the, uh, of our business today. So a few things that you can do today, um, access control for sure. I mean, you have a single point of access to your network and your infra, so you can log whoever is coming in and out and what kind of commands they're running. And you can also do hardening to that environment in a, you know, it's a single environment or multiple, but it's still easier than in just opening access to every single um, server uh, or VM in your uh, infrastructure. Um, primarily, and you know, if you've done this before, you can do this in two ways. You can manually do it. So manually, uh, what I mean by that is actually get a VM install, you know, put in the patches and whatnot, or you can use uh, infrastructure as code. So let's kind of explore this a little bit here. The manual process would involve um, getting a virtual machine um, really resembles a lot in what you would do actually uh, in the physical world. So getting a VM up, installing the OS, installing the patches, uh, hardening, removing services, um, installing tools or a set of toolings that will allow you to see what folks are up to inside of the VM. Um, then you would, once you've done with all the work, you would have to generalize the VM. Uh, enough so that it can be redeployed at easy uh, back to your, you know, infra. Um, and then, of course, upload that to the cloud so other folks could use it. Um, now, if you're using something like um, an IAC, so infrastructure as code, you can essentially automate every single step on my manual process there. Uh, by that, I mean you can use, um, you know, all of the creation of the VM, installing of the OS and patches and whatnot. I'm okay, um, and I think a lot of us doing this have done it primarily manually, so you understand, you map out the entire process, and then you would move into something a little more automated. So things like Terraform, uh, Packer, ARM templates, um, to name a few tools, will allow you to get there. And uh, the idea is that uh, with tools like Terraform and Packer, you can actually uh, streamline a lot of the functions that you would you know, normally do it manually. Um, I do want to take some considerations here, though. Uh, we, we talk about, you know, how awesome the tools are, and I, I 
I, you know, I'm a primary user of them. I, I think they're fantastic. I would never want to go back and do things manually again. Now, uh, there's always a good and bad and an ugly uh, consideration here. Let's talk about the good one. It's, it's clear um, you can reproduce essentially kind of in a cookie cutter fashion where you do it once and you replicate that. Um, once you learn something like HCL, you know, essentially you can adapt to any cloud, uh, which is a fantastic feature if you ask me. Um, the bad thing when we go with something like IEC is that if you're not careful and you have everything fully, fully automated, a bad commit or push of a code to a source code repo can then trigger down um, a break in your environment. Um, and then, you know, if you extend that, you get into an ugly situation where that could potentially be your production or staging. Now, there are various ways to mitigate that. I mean, there's, I don't think we should stop using IEC at all because of this, but uh, I wanted to bring that uh, to folks who are new to this. So if you find yourself into that situation, there are workarounds and uh, we've documented, um, I've, I've had some resources at the end here that uh, could you know, help you out if that's your case. Um, driving a little bit about Terraform and Packer here. So, and I didn't want to explain you know, Terraform. I think we're, you know, in, in, in this conference today, uh, most of us are pretty familiar with Terraform, but I want to bring a few points in here. Um, the whole concept of using Terraform for uh, the jump boxes is that Terraform can, you know, you can build, you can change, and you can version your, your infra. And the versioning here is also very interesting. And I think it's a concept that we want, we want to keep in mind. Now, if you look at Packer, um, the idea of using Packer here is that you can essentially carbon copy this virtual machine images and you can reuse them. Um, so bear those two concepts in mind. Terraform, I can essentially create spin up version and then Packer, I can have this identical uh, virtual machines, images. And then the question becomes, now I have too many options. And you know, there's a lot of choices. Do I go with Terraform? Do I go with Packer? You know, when should I use one versus the other? And I, I try to put my um, go-to trade-off uh, workbook here. So for Terraform, uh, on its own, so you're not using Packer for this, I tend to use Terraform for that purpose when I don't need to heavily customize my image, so the VM. What I mean by that is that when you're doing small tweaks um, right when you're deploying it to your uh, infra, that's okay. Uh, it's not gonna you know, take a lot of time. Now, the time, if the time to build the solution, meaning if the time to deploy it um, doesn't matter for you, then yes, you can probably just go with Terraform. So it's gonna probably take more time as you are tweaking and modifying this VM, you know, as you're pushing it to the infra. Uh, we can do with, you know, there's a lot of tooling around that as well that can go well with this here. Um, and then one trade-off is uh, possibility of snowflakes. What I mean by that is if you're trying to make a standard base image for your team, this could be potentially become a problem unless you lock it down so people don't, don't change um, you know, the deployment image uh, that much. Now, if you do Terraform with Packer, um, what you do essentially is instead of using all the baking time of having the image on the deployment time, you're actually doing this before that. So you're baking an image, uh, you're hardening, you are installing patches, you're installing all of the audit tools inside. And then once you deploy, you really have a carbon copy of that image. So at least the drift from that image uh, is likely to be less than if everybody were just to deploy with Terraform. And that's essentially the concept here. Bear in mind that a lot of times, um, the fact of just, you know, if you just look at hardening an operating system um, and installing every, every uh, piece of plugging or disabling services that can take a lot of time. And it, at most, it's a very 
difficult job to do to get it done right. So if you have a, a, a gold image where you can just replicate, uh, that seems like a preferable option here. Um, I'll leave this for your reference as you, you know, if you, if you go back to GitHub and you're going through uh, this exercise, I actually have a small script there called uh, Setup Terraform. And what this will do is it essentially will uh, help you out, uh, configure your Azure subscription and get all of the details. So then you can essentially go to this phase here where you just source the terraform.rc file as we see at the bottom here. Uh, and then you're good to go for either Packer or Terraform. So single script to do that. And so I'll leave this here uh, just for a reference really. Um, let's kind of talk about one example here. So custom build jump box with Packer. Uh, here's our big picture, our diagram. Uh, the pip here is a public IP address. So your IP address attached to a network interface. Um, and then you have a VNet, which is uh, set to this 10 slash 16 here, um, address space with a virtual machine inside. And then an NSG uh, is your firewall. Now, I wanted to be able to do a couple of things here. Um, with Packer, I'm only interested in, you know, the only thing I'm going to get out of this is really this image here. So I want to have a a version of this virtual machine that is uh, pre-baked with some tools. Now, what kind of tools? Well, um, for this, I'm gonna be using a pseudo pair, which is a fantastic piece of software by Square. They open source that, you can get it on GitHub. I got a little reference down here. As they're demoing that in, in, in here, and I'll try to demo as well. Um, on the left side, you see a developer doing an SSH session to a server. He needs to run a command. So he does uh, sudo and then, you know, something, but he can't just run that. So you see in the middle here where they're asking for another engineer. So let's say your security officer or, you know, the security group would have to come back and say, yes, it's approved or not approved. And then he would run this command called sudo pair. Um, and then the person who can approve it would then be able to see, and that's what you have on the right side here, everything that the developer on the left side is typing. To the point that uh, if the security team feels like this is dangerous or you know, not approved, they can essentially do a control D on the keyboard um, and kill the session. And that's what they're gonna demo on this one here. So pretty interesting uh, piece of, um, of software, but at this point in time, so today we don't have that prepackaged for uh, we know uh, the majority of the Linux out there and and whatnot. So that becomes a problem. So I cannot just uh, run this with let's say Terraform. Um, I did try, and it requires a lot of modifications, and you know you have to embed a script, and it becomes really cumbersome. Now. If I do this on Packer, I can actually make sure that this actually works and on a pre-baked uh, image. So let's kind of take a quick tour here of how uh, Packer looks like. And that's the example that I have actually. Um, at the top of the file, we have some variables like the client ID, the secret, the subscription, and the SSH user and password. Um, this will be used for when Packer bakes up this VM, essentially, you know, it brings up a VM in Azure, it installs everything inside, and then at the end of it, it will extract this image and then it will shut down all of the resources that it used to create the image, uh, but it will leave the image in place so you can, you know, reuse later. Under a section called builders is where you see the type here is Azure ARM and there are various other types of builders that you can use. Um, you can see, you know, client ID, and again, all of the little things that we need. And in here, you kind of have already an idea where I'm installing that. I'm actually doing this on a FreeBSD um, image, FreeBSD 12. Um, and you know, there's a location here where the image will be uh, placed after the fact as well. So I can essentially consume that. Um, and then the last part is the provisioner. And 
here is where it gets interesting. So you see like my setup underscore uh, pseudo pair. So this little script here, um, I end up having to bake a small script that would run by Packer when I was installing this, this VM. Essentially, again, we don't have that as a prepackaged solution. It would be really cool to just do a package install and then you know get it done, but that's not the case today. So with this, I can actually come here and say, hey, you know what? Upload all of these files, execute them inside of the VM as you're installing it. And then by the end of it, um, what Packer will do is this deprovision, which is it will generalize the image so that you know the next user can come in, can spin up a VM and can insert their username. You know, it will get a different host name uh, and whatnot. So uh, this is a crucial uh, step at the end, and it's automated uh, for you. So let's kind of see the, how that uh, plays out. Um, and I might fast forward this a little bit um, if it doesn't go here. See if Askinima is gonna play. If not, I can play in the terminal. Okay, so that didn't work there. So let's just try on this here. So essentially, um, and you can actually do that as well as you clone uh, this repo here. Uh, we are looking for this here. And I'm gonna play that out. So you see, I'm sourcing the file uh, to just get uh, my my variables. And then the command is really just um, packer, and then you're gonna build, uh, you pass out the variable uh, files that you need to use. And then one of the JSON files that specifies the image and what you want it to do. From this point on, it's just really, you know, watching the paint dry. There's not much you, you have to do. It's all fully of installing everything and configuring everything, you will say, hey, your image is ready. And it's essentially, um, you know, sitting on your uh, subscription so you can use later. Uh, and that's what that, that little video there was showing, but essentially the same thing here. Now, what do we get out of this? And I'll, I'll try to show you this uh, kind of quickly in here so you see how that looks like. So I have two virtual machines, one on the left side, one on the right side. Um, on this side here, you see I'm logged in as security at Delete Me, which is the VM that I have. So that's your security officer. And then here's a developer. So the developer is going to try to do something like this, uh, vsudo. And it says, well, you can't, um, you can't just do vsudo. You, somebody has to approve you. So really quickly, I'm going to copy that out. You know, I'm going to tell, hey, man, can you approve me on this? Uh, and then as you go over that, it will say, okay, you've been asked to approve that gentleman. Do you want to go for that? It's like, sure, I'll let him do it. So you see, we're looking at the same thing. And as I'm doing some stuff in here, uh, doing this, the uh, secret officer can essentially say, nope, you're not doing anything. And then, you know, you're off. So that's kind of an interesting tool to have, but again, not available today. Uh, but with the, the help of Packer, you can make it, you know, easily available. And, you know, pseudo pairing action will be essentially that. The second example that I wanted to show you here is this one. Uh, what if you, so it was great, you know, we did that. And I can, by the way, that the VM that I just uh, SSH into, I brought that up with Terraform. So once I have the image reference, I can just you know bring it up and down um, if I want it. And it's also a core thing here. If you um, if you have a jump box and you don't want to leave it running uh, for a long time, you know you know on a patch and whatnot, it's fairly easy to just destroy that and then have a pipeline where Packer will build a new version of it and then it will. Uh, you know, move that into uh, Terraform and Terraform can then deploy it. So you kind of always have this fresh environment. Going back to this, what I wanted to do now is whenever I SSH into that VM, um, I want to tie this with something else. So I feel like it's not safe enough to just, you know, have a public key. Um, so what I wanted to do is to use one of these little guys, which I actually have 
hooked up to this computer right now. Um, if you haven't seen this, these are fantastic. I, I highly recommend you taking a look at the YubiKeys. And what you can do is you can tie a YubiKey uh, with some PAN modules on uh, Unix-based systems. And your SSH will only proceed. So you need a public key. Uh, you can also put a password. So password, public key, and having one of these guys. And also a passphrase on your uh, keys, which is what I have on, on my case here. Um, navigating kind of quickly what I have in the uh, directory for uh, FreeBSD. So we're launching a second FreeBSD VM with everything installed inside. I have uh, you know, the main file output, which will tell you essentially, here's the, how to connect back to the VM, your SSH to this host, uh, some of the variables, and then your YubiKey uh, variables there. And then what I'm doing, um, I'm essentially running this YubiKey underscore lockdown script. So the reason why I'm doing that is I'm not really installing a lot of stuff. It's very, the installation part is, is fairly minimum. It doesn't really take a lot of time at runtime. Um, and I also feel like I don't want to, because I have specific information for my user on this uh, YubiKey uh, .tf, TF virus, I don't want that to be baked into an image, that the image will be essentially used by anybody in my organization that I want to give access to. So I feel like this is a good use case where I'm okay with that little bit of more extra time deploying it, but it's very personal because you know a lot of my information is there. Um, again, a little bit of the information here, uh, we're gonna be doing, um, the VM is the smallest one that I that was able to put it in. You can see the user and the subnet and whatnot. And then FreeBSD 12 as your release. You can absolutely do this with CentOS or Ubuntu. And I've done it it's in one of my examples in the GitHub. Um, going over some of this, you would essentially need uh, information around the secret, the token, and the client ID. There's some steps on how to do it. You can also kind of combine that a little bit with some um, stuff that you can run in the terminal. And, and let me see if this one here, oh, that one's not gonna play here either. So what this will show essentially is how this is getting deployed through Terraform. Um, the beauty of this is that it really, it's watching the paint dry because once you run, you know, you've done your plan, everything went well, you just deploy and wait. Now, after this is actually deployed, um, instead of showing it in here, let's do a live one here again. So I'm logging out of that VM and then I'm SSH into another one. So let me make this a little bit bigger here. Hold on a second. As you can see here, um, essentially, uh, I, so I have a little bit of configuration that is getting my user and my local uh, key. So a public and private key that key, I already have a passphrase on that. The reason you don't see here is because I'm running um, SSH agent, and so I don't have to retype that all the time. So it got into a point where, well, I need the Yubi key for that user, and if I don't have it, uh, then I cannot log in. But because I do, and I just unplug that in here, uh, I can now get back into the VM. So this was all you know, essentially pre-baked with um, that Terraform, um, you know, template there. Now, if I log out here, and I'll do that so you can see it, and I try to log back in, I don't have the key with me. Uh, there's nothing I can do about that. Like, it won't accept the login at all. Even though I have a public key, even though I use a passphrase, because I don't have that, it's, it's a done deal. There's nothing I can do about it. Now, uh, moving forward, uh, I also left this here. You can essentially clean everything out uh, from your environment there, um, you know, after you're done with all the labs. Some of the next steps that I, that I you know, recommend uh, here, if you want more hands-on on, on Terraform, I actually have a, a bootcamp, uh, feel free to just, you know, clone that uh, fork and, you know, kind of play with that. Uh, there are more examples on how to use Terraform on Azure a bunch of new resources too. And if you need a book, I still recommend Terraform Up and Running. It's awesome, it's a fantastic reference. Uh, it really was probably my 
go-to book when I when I started uh, doing Terraform. So highly, highly recommended. Uh, I'll leave this in here. Um, that is my Twitter handle if you want to touch base. Uh, the only difference here is instead of Jumpbox is Jumpbox V2. So I just want to navigate there for a second so you see what I'm talking about. Or another link, and I'll put that in the in the chat here, is aka.ms slash jump boxes. So everything is in here, including the presentation. Um, so you have everything there. So I'll put that link up in here if you are interested. And that's going to go instead of VI. And that's the link. Um, so I'll leave that in there. And I think I did right under the 30 minutes with one minute left. <laughs>